Good day, guys. Recording? Yep. All right. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the radar cruise on the RAV4. Now, above and beyond everything, the cruise control's turned on like any Toyota. Refer to the owner's manual for that. Okay, because it's down here and you can't see it, but it's got its way. It's uh, always default off. You push it and press it down to activate cruise and up to increase the speed. Now you can see the speed increasing here. What a new function is, and I'd say it's pretty much on all cars now, when I hold it, it will jump by five kilometers at a time. So now I've set the cruise to 120 kilometers an hour, but to reduce it, I'll now drop it very quickly back down to 105. Now, see those three lines? Can you see them? Yep. Now, see this button? That button, by reducing those blue lines, it reduces the distance to the car in front by increasing those three lines it increases the distance to the car in front so I'm going to now accelerate and bring that Hyundai into the radar scope there it is it's appeared there you go here so that car's now appeared on my radar now the Toyota RAV4 is whoa 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 whoa, whoa. okay this was the risk of using radar cruise there on that corner. Okay, I had to shut the system off as the car couldn't brake in time. Now, it usually will. I'm gonna now trigger the cruise control back on and it's resumed to my set speed and now I'll increase it. Now, even though I'm increasing it, you can see the car in front. The car is now on radar cruise. Uh, now, it's also programmed from my experience here the more corners there are, obviously it's going to bring on the speed slower. It's not going to accelerate now, see? It's not accelerating. I'm on corners. But as soon as the road straightens up and it's safe, the car will begin to reach its cruise set cruise speed. So, these three lines, see that? I'm bringing the car to a shorter distance. So it, now, with one bar, I'll be closer to the car. With two, three bars, I'll be further away from the car. Get it? So that's a very important button now. So now I'm closer to the Hyundai Highlight in front, and now I'm further from the Hyundai Highlight in front. The car will brake and use the gearbox and brakes however it deems fit to keep you at a safe distance. But, of course, if you're cruising at a higher speed, like let's bring it up now to 105, Okay, show them the car in front. And the cameras are reading the brake lights, they know. So now my Toyota RAV4 is braking. Okay, it's braking and it's continuing to brake. Show them this now. And now it's released the brake. So I'm on radar cruise, okay? Now, the second thing is about lane departure control and steering assist. Now, down here, down there, there's a button that looks like that little thing there. So now I'm gonna push that button. Lane departure assist uh, control turned on. It's also available through the menu here. Okay, this is where you set it up. Okay, now I'm not gonna go into that. You should really be going into your own owner's manual. Park control, lane departure control is all there. So now, okay, now let's simulate it again steering assist active. Now what I've decided is that the steering assist is far more active for this departure than this. So the car will very easily put you in the head-on position of a head-on collision. Okay now I've turned the cruise off. We're going to wait for a straight strip of road. We're now winding through beautiful South Island of New Zealand. Uh, we're on the west coast which is always raining. <laughs> Uh, and when it doesn't rain, it pours, <laughs> as they say. So, Knight's Point Lookout, 300 metres on the right. Okay, guys, let's focus here again, Dylan. The lane departure on this vehicle. Okay, you don't have to be on cruise control for it to work. Okay, now film in front. I'm going to let the car now steer into the left line. As you can see, show them, Dylan. Oh, you can see the car now lost its line. Now. The lane departure control, get my hand, is very much more active for this line. So when going to that line, you can see that the car is constantly steering its way back. Okay, though it just let me come off the road. But for this side of the road, I warn you now, 
the car will put you on the wrong side of the road. Now, it's attempting to keep it on the line, and it did, it did, but from my experience, the lane departure assist, steering assist, is far more aggressive for the left side in Australia, and New Zealand, and Japan, and whoever drives on this side, than on that side. So, I'll give you a warning right now. You can focus less on the road with this system, it allows a lot more safety in what it does, but let's do it here. You can see the car now is steering its way back in the middle of the lane. Show them here now. But it's not very aggressive. So what I'm saying is the car will steer, not steer aggressively back from the center line, but it'll steer aggressively back. I've tested this hundreds of times before making the video, and I can show you, despite what Toyota will claim, that they have tuned this to aggressively bring the car back from the left, but not from the right. They don't want you taking your eyes off the road, particularly when the car's moving to this side, which is the right side. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So we've got something that I think, you know, I've had tourists asking me, they seem to know, I have mechanic written all over my face. I've had two groups of people ask me with different models of Toyotas what these buttons do. And I'm like, how do you know how to ask me that? And they said, you look like you don't. I go, well, I don't. I didn't know what this was. I originally thought this was for your park assist distance. I didn't realize that it's for the radar cruise. You must read the owner's manual or you'll actually be jeopardizing your life lives because these systems are not all defaulted on. I had to actually turn all these systems on uh, because this was a brand new rental car with 20 kilometers on it. So once again, I'll now activate the cruise control. Now, when your cruise is active, you can see what happens, this box lights up. I'll put in sports mode as well. So in sports mode, you can see that uh, eco mode is blue. Sports mode is red, right? Lane departure assist unavailable for under 50 kilometers an hour. Okay, now, the temperature continues to fall. Okay, so now I'm in sports mode, you can see the car, well, you can't see it, but the car's jerking all over the place as it changes the CVT ratio up for more power. Now bring the camera here. I will now turn the radar cruise back on. So you can see now, when I press up hard, it'll increase by five kilometers an hour. Now, the reason the car's not accelerating is because the camera can see we're on corners, and now as the road straightens up, the camera will begin to accelerate, uh, the car will begin to accelerate. Now, when these lines in the middle are washed out and, and faded out, the camera can't pick up, them up very easily. So once again, do not rely on this system to keep you in the middle of the road. It is simply designed for when your hands are on the wheel to gently show them here. I can have it happening now. The car's gently steering away from that line. Now I'll bring it over here and it's gently steering away from that line. So that's the system. Uh, when your cruise is on, your box is lit up over here. So it can be as, see, why I'm making this video is, as simple as this is, this is Toyota simplicity. I doubt many other cars have got such a straightforward format and you have to read the owner's manual and sit there for ha half an hour and play around with all your settings and, and get to know the system. So, lane departure is now turned on. Now, the cruise control is turned on and the way to see it, it's not that easy to see is up here, the little green light with the 51. So I'm gonna now accelerate in groups of five. So I'll set the speed to 100. Of course, the car's now on corners, and now I'm gonna push this button and increase the distance to the car in front of me. See, and now by, see how the other cars appeared in the radar, now he's disappeared. So you can sort of get to know what it's doing. The car's now braking. And now I'll see, I, I like to have that at the maximum distance away. Uh, actually, sorry, I like to have it in the middle. 
because the Maximum is very aggressive and you'll find the car aggressively brakes itself. So look, don't be afraid to use it, but definitely read the owner's manual before you do. You can see the car now is braking. I'm not on the brakes. Uh, and it's working quite well. There's a lot of technology that goes into this and it's all up here and in various control modules throughout the vehicle. But yeah, there you go. This is the now standard on a rental car with neoprene wetsuit type seats. So there's no sunroof here. Uh, it's a rental car, but yet it features, features these, these sorts of things. Uh, which of these are critical safety features. And once again, if I keep veering left and right and left and right, the car's gonna tell me to have a break. All right, Dylan, put the camera here so they can see it. Lane departure left. Lane departure right, lane departure left. The car in front of me is going to think I'm drunk. Lane departure right. Eventually, it'll tell me to have a cup of coffee. Also, if you keep your hands off the wheel, it will want a sharp input signal like that to switch it off. So it'll say, lane departure disabled, put your hands on the wheel, a triangle will come up, and the system will turn off until it gets one little input. So that's that. Hope that helps. Uh, and that's fantastic technology that's now filtered down into basic a rental car, which unfortunately, this car has got one of the most dangerous suspension setups I've ever seen, refer to previous videos. Also, the brakes are very insufficient. The brakes are insufficiently dangerous, so I uh, will add, do not buy this vehicle if you're driving outside of the city on any of these types of roads. It's an unsafe vehicle and shame, shame Toyota. So what they've done, they've put all these features in for you to buy the car, but the car handling wise is unsafe. It's all over the road and it's a very dangerous car at more than 80 kilometers an hour. Also, as you can see, the controls are far away from me. Uh, the air conditioning button is very far away from me. The clock is barely visible again, like the Corolla, uh, because I've got my headlights on. So absolutely, uh, you know, this is a good case where they're putting technology in for you to buy a car which has very little actual built-in safety. You want to buy a safe car to drive at speed, you buy a Subaru. This is a front-wheel drive RAV4 and it all feels great until you hit a bump and turn and the whole car begins to lose its line. I've been taken back uh, many times by the dangerous nature of the handling of this car uh, and I had to add that in at the end. So shame, shame Toyota, you've done it again. I upgraded from a Corolla to get stability and safety in a car uh, as I brought my children back to New Zealand to extend my holiday and theirs, but yet I found myself in a more dangerous car. The Corolla is far more sure-footed than this and yet is still unacceptable to me. So Toyota, shame, shame. But the reliability they've got. So yeah, it's a great car for going to school and that in the 50 zone. Otherwise, do not buy the RAV4.